What is up, Z Fighters? It's Manga Adventures, and today I'm bringing you a new what if I thought would be a lot of fun. If you enjoy, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But enough self promotion, let's jump right in. In this what if, Kakarot was the firstborn son of Bardock, and as we know, he was born a low class warrior. In an interview, Akira says low class Saiyans either become engineers or infantry babies in hopes they'll come back stronger. But those infantry babies not only have an extremely low survival weight, but if they do return, they could still not be deemed proper combatants. So when Gine found out Kakura was going to be sent off world, she pleaded for her son to stay as an engineer, not wanting him to die. Nobody listens until Bardock steps in saying he would double his workload in return for having his son stay as an engineer. The Saiyans agree to this, and from that point onward, Kakarot barely sees his father, who was almost always conquering planets. So he's mostly raised by his mother, who is a very kind and caring woman, and these traits get picked up by her son. A tired Bardock would push himself past his limits, making near-fatal mistakes in battle, and possibly gaining a Zenkai. So I will say he is stronger than his canon counterpart, if only slightly. After this slip up, he would be allowed home to rest, and this is when Raditz was made, making Kakarot an older brother. Since we don't know the exact age gap between Kakarot and Raditz, I'll just say he was born at the same time as Vegeta, so five years. Raditz has a projected power level of 1500, more than 10 times that of Kakarot's projected power, but he wasn't the slightest bit jealous, just happy to be an older brother, though this wouldn't last long. Frieza has plans to destroy the planet, a gut feeling Bardock couldn't get rid of, so just in case, Bardock wants to send Raditz off-world while his power level is low enough to go undetected, at least until he gets older and it grows. Kakarot eagerly volunteers to go with him. His power level is also low enough to go undetected and he doesn't want his little brother to go to an unknown planet alone. Bardock had no reason to object and Gine gave the parting words, protect your brother. Reassuring his mother by giving her one last hug, Kakarot and Raditz head to Earth. There they are met by Grandpa Gohan, who of course Kakarot is weary of and runs away into the forest to set up camp. A while passes before Kakarot realizes his father was right and Frieza has indeed destroyed their planet. The grief and memories of his family swell up until the kind-hearted Saiyan can't hold it in any longer. He begins to cry uncontrollably, which also causes baby Raditz to cry. That is, until Grandpa Gohan steps in to give him a tissue. Kakarot, still emotional, simply hugs the old man, who in turn hugs him back. Once the boy calms down, he explains the situation to Gohan, who doesn't question a thing. All he asks is what he wants to do next. Thinking back to the last words from his mother, Kakarot wants nothing more than to get stronger and protect his brother. Gohan happily accepts and takes the two boys in. Once settled, Kakarot begins the turtle school training, eight months of intense physical labor. But even after completing it, he still isn't satisfied, wanting to reach greater heights. Seeing the resolve in Kakarot's eyes, Gohan suggests climbing Korin Tower and drinking the Ultra Divine Water. Kakarot is hesitant at first, not wanting to leave Raditz, but he completely trusts his master to look after him, seeing the old man as a second father figure to him and his brother. So, Gohan drives him up a map and sends him off. Kakara at this point is already superhuman levels, so finding Korin's tower with the help of a map shouldn't take long. He finds the sacred land of Korin, befriending and earning the trust of the villagers, thanks to his kind and earnest heart, eventually gaining permission to climb Korin's tower, a task that takes him a little under a day, but once he gets to the top, he finds Korin, who gives him a sense of being to restore his stamina. Wanting Raditz to try it one day, he asks if he could take a bean with him, to which the cat agrees, but first, they have to play keep away with the Ultra Divine Water for three days. Once he gets the water, Korin reveals that it's just tap water and the real training was catching him. Kakarot sincerely thanks the Hermit Master for the training and sense of being before departing back home. At this point in the story, a year has passed since the destruction of planet Vegeta. Kakarot is 6 with a power level of 180, and Raditz is 1 with a power level of 160. Kakarot is now around the strength of Grandpa Gohan, as seen in the Fortune Teller Baba arc in the canon story, so these two are now good sparring partners for one another. Thanks to this, Kakarot's power level would jump to 230, meaning Raditz is watching and enjoying the sparring matches, 
wanting nothing more than to join them one day. He begins copying their movements and even picks up the Kamehameha after watching it. Noticing his little brother's interest, when he turned for Kakarot allowed Raditz to spar with him much to his excitement. Though neither was prepared for what happened next. Raditz blitzes his brother at astonishing speed. Kakarot barely responds in time, blocking with both his arms, the attack sending him sliding back but not flying. Kakarot's arms are numb after that single attack but his brother shows no signs of stopping. He charges once again and Kakarot pushes himself to dodge this time. Raditz may be strong but his moves are sloppy. He loses his balance after the missed attack and Kakarot takes the opportunity to counter with a punch, sending his brother flying but as if it did nothing, he gets back up, wiping his face with a smile and charges again. Kakarot can dodge and counter for a little while, but Raditz is improving as he fights. It starts with him missing but not losing his balance, then he's able to dodge one of his brother's counters before landing a strike of his own. Satisfied with how the match is going, Raditz wants to try one last thing, the Kamehameha. He charges up the attack as Kakarot frantically tells him to stop, but his little brother doesn't listen. With no other choice, Kakarot charges a Kamehameha of his own and Raditz overpowers his brother, engulfing him in the blast, leaving him burnt to a crisp, but still clinging on to life. Gohan quickly grabbed the sensu being Kakarot wanted to give Raditz, but the baby at the time refused to eat it. Thankfully so. Meanwhile, Raditz watches in horror as his brother struggles to chew and swallow a single bean, though once he does, his wounds are completely gone. He jumps up, feeling stronger than before, not knowing he got a Zenkai, boosting his power level to 400, which is what Raditz is at right now. Kakarot, now confident of his strength, wants a rematch, but the pale Raditz refuses, simply wanting to go back inside. No one knew that this was the day he lost his drive for battle. Years pass until Boma arrives looking for the four-star Dragon Ball, where she runs across Kakarot who has gone through his growth spurt, but because he doesn't have a challenge since Raditz quit fighting, and Gohan's getting too old to be a sparring partner, his power level is still around 400, while Raditz, even without training, gained a power level of 1000. Boma was smitten by Kakarot's appearance, but the Saiyan was more interested in her car, wanting to know how it worked because of his engineering background. As the two hit it off, Boma explains she's looking for the magic dragon balls that can grant any witch. This catches Kakarot's attention who gets extremely close to the girl's face. Even bringing people back to life, he asked and a beat red Boma said yes. Kakarot then bows his head pleading to accompany her on the journey. The young girl eagerly accepts the opportunity, her mind fantasizing about the two being alone together, but this is cut short when Raditz arrives. Kakarot introduces his little brother to Boma before explaining the situation to him, but the boy seems disinterested to say the least. He's never met his parents, his only family is Grandpa Gohan and his big brother. However, when Gohan hears this, he gives him his blessing and the four star Dragon Ball. Ecstatic that they get to reunite with their family, Kakarot hugs Gohan, thanking him for everything before heading off with Raditz, hoping this journey can help his apathetic little brother. At this point, this is a speed run of OG Dragon Ball. Meeting Roshi happens as usual, and after finding out these are the students of Gohan, he happily gives him his Dragon Ball and the Flying Nimbus. They beat Oolong, earning another Dragon Ball. When Yasha tries to ambushing them, he's taken out in one shot, and seeing the difference in strength, he offers the group a car. They arrive at Fire Mountain, where Kakarot greets the Ox King, knowing of him from the many stories told by Gohan. Happy to see the student of an old friend, he asks him to locate his granddaughter and get the Bancho fan to blow out the flames from Roshi. Thinking it would be a good idea to get to know someone his age, Kakarot sends Raditz to do this task, but unfortunately nothing happens. Raditz is polite and answers Chi Chi's questions, so she doesn't fall in love as she did with the uncultured Goku, and after finding out Roshi threw away the Bancho fan, the turtle hermit asks unreasonable demands to extinguish the flames. So, Kakarot decides to do it himself. This causes Roshi to confirm he's been surpassed and Boma to get more clinging, knowing he defended her honor. They get the Dragon Ball, making six in total, but it doesn't take long for Pilaf and his crew to try to steal them, but thanks to an older and more intelligent Kakarot, this plan fails and the gang finally summons Shinron. Kakarot pushed past the amazement and with a voice full of excitement, he asks the dragon to bring back his parents. The dragon explains he can bring them back, but this can't be done with one wish. They must first bring their souls over from planet Vegeta to Earth and then wish them back. For those who don't agree, 
Krillin's soul had to be brought back from Namek to Earth before being wished back using two of Perunga's wishes. And despite what Kami said, as seen in the Resurrection of F with Frieza, who was dead for well over a decade and still brought back, you can wish back people who have been dead for more than a year. Lastly, with reincarnation, nobody knows how long that takes because, again, over a decade later, Frieza was still in the process. And although Boo was immediately reincarnated, you can chalk that up to King Yemma doing Goku a favor. So if you have more reasons why they couldn't be brought back, leave it in the comments, but back to the story. While Boma gives Kakarot a worried look, the young man still has a smile on his face because although he has to wait another year, he still will be able to see his parents again. As the Dragon Balls scatter, Kakarot excitedly waits for the next year. Boma uses this opportunity to get close to the young man by taking him back to Capsule Corp. You see, throughout their journey, Kakarot has always been interested in the tech Boma would pull out, wanting to learn more about it. So instead of looking for Roshi to get stronger, he goes with Boma to gain more knowledge. Although Boma does trick him into a date or two, the time is still used wisely. While he did learn a lot, he also had some things to teach about space travel due to being an engineer on planet Vegeta. And I think with this knowledge, the ship built in the Namek Saga to get Goku to the planet would be built sooner. Although his greatest achievement the past year would be creating a Dragon Radar of his own. Although Boma was over his shoulder guiding him 90% of the time, it's still impressive because throughout the series, no one could even make repairs to the radar besides Boma, except maybe her family. So now we have two Dragon Radars cutting the time in half searching for the Dragon Balls. So when the time came, Raditz went one direction, Kakarot went the other. Raditz is tasked with getting the Dragon Ball in Muscle Tower, but not realizing how cold it is, he almost freezes similar to Kid Goku and is saved by Suno. The army breaks down the door and threatens to shoot the family, and although Raditz won't fight, he'll catch all the bullets aimed at Suno and disarm them. When Suno sees how strong he is, she pleads for him to rescue the mayor, and without so much as a second thought, the kind-hearted Saiyan rushes to the tower, easily defeating all the foes without landing a single strike of his own, simply disarming them or dodging their attacks, causing them to harm themselves. He eventually meets and rescues Android 8, sympathizing with the giant who doesn't want the fight. Together they get to the top of Muscle Tower and disarm General White, who fake surrenders, but soon after, all the grunts that Raditz disarmed and ran past on his way up came flooding in. Thinking he has the upper hand, General White pulls out a hidden pistol and orders his men to fire. Raditz, not worried, prepares to brace for the attack, but Android 8 shields the boy with his body, much to the young Saiyan's surprise. When the soldiers try to reload, Android 8 charges them, taking everyone down, including General White. Raditz is confused. If Android 8 doesn't like to fight, why did he attack? Android 8 just smiles and says he wants to protect his new friend. With the mayor now saved, they head back to Suno's house and Raditz is gifted a Dragon Ball and dinner. Seeing how happy the village was after the Red Ribbon Army was defeated, Raditz sees what he could use his strength for, and that's to take this threat down. With this goal in mind, he's putting his pacifist nature behind him until he achieves it. After that, Raditz arrives in the sacred land of Korin to obtain a Dragon Ball from Upa and his father Bora, but soon after, Mercenary Tau arrives. Bora wants to protect the land himself, so he challenges Tao Pai Pai, but when he's about to die, Raditz interrupts the fight, saving Upa's father and beating Tao without so much as a second thought, seeing him as a heartless killer. Raditz then sees on his radar that the Red Ribbon Arby has a Dragon Ball and he heads over there to take down the whole base once and for all, single-handedly defeating the army. He then meets back up with his brother to find that they only have six Dragon Balls and the radar won't pick up the seventh. They go back home to ask Grandpa Gohan what they should do, and he suggests they ask Fortune Teller Baba. So, the two head to the old lady, and after realizing they can't afford her fees, she instead lets them fight her five champions. Although they each have their gimmicks, these mean nothing to the sheer power of Raditz. That is until the last fighter, a masked man with a familiar hairstyle, steps into the ring. Raditz tries blitzing him like all his other opponents, but the attack is blocked. The young Saiyan is confused and tries pulling away, but he can't. The masked man has a tight grip and it isn't until he decides to let go that Raditz stumbles back. The young Saiyan charges at the masked man with a little more power this time, but halfway into the attack, the masked man appears in front of him, punching Raditz across the arena. 
He wipes his face as he struggles to get up, shocked at the sight of seeing his own blood for the first time. The masked man slowly walks forward in an intimidating manner. This is the first time Raditz has ever faced someone like this. Yes, Kakarot was more skilled, but this is different. This masked man is strong. Raditz has no choice but to go all out. He clashes his fist with the masked man, sending shock waves that stretches out for miles. Kakarot shields himself just to barely stay on his feet. When he opens his eyes, Raditz and the masked man are gone. Kakarot only able to see them zipping around the arena ever so slightly, but from what he can see, Raditz is smiling. The young Saiyan's blood is boiling at the thought of going all out against someone who can actually take it. The two then reappear each on the opposite side of the arena. The masked man charges up his key in one hand, but Raditz freezes, his hands visibly shaking as he flashes back to his brother burnt to a crisp. Kakarot snaps him out of it, telling him not to hold back. It'll be all right. Raditz looks back at his brother and decides to believe in his words before charging a Kamehameha. He and the masked man's beams clash, neither giving way, causing a huge explosion that throws them both out of the ring. But Raditz is caught by his older brother. Baba admits defeat and offers to tell them where the last Dragon Ball is, but before that, the masked man wants to introduce himself alongside his wife. When he removes the mask, a familiar woman appears from Baba's house and Kakarot starts to tear up, realizing that these are his parents he hasn't seen in over a decade. While Kakarot hugs his mother, who's proud that he was able to keep his brother safe, Barak gives Raditz a stern nod acknowledging his strength. Baba explains that once their souls moved to Earth, she was able to bring them over for a day and of course, Bardock wanted to test his son's strength. Although they want to quickly celebrate this happy reunion, first things first, get the last Dragon Ball from Pilaf and officially wish them back, which they do fairly quickly. When Gine comes back to life, the first thing she does is pick up Raditz, happy to see how much he's grown. Though Bardock cuts the pleasantry short. Although they're back alive, there's more work that must be done. He wants nothing more than to get revenge on Freezer for killing him, and to do that, he needs to train up his sons for the next few years. Raditz would finally grow outside his expected power level thanks to training with someone as strong as him like Bardock, and the two would grow to a power level of 1500 after a single year, Raditz only being 14. Before anyone complains, I'm using Dragon Ball Super Bardock, whose power level we don't know. Everything is speculation, so I put him at around 1,000. I know in the Bardock TV special after Zenkai, he was close to 10,000, but even then, no one knew his pre-Zenkai strength. So Bardock's power level to me is all headcanon. Back to the story, the one who would have to train the hardest is Kakarot, since he was the weakest, starting at a power level of 400. So after a year, he would only be at 600. But even though he's significantly weaker, he still challenges his father to a one-on-one -on -one sparring match. Reason being, Boma just turned 18, and he wants to ask for her hand in marriage. But before he does, he wants to prove to not only her, but his father, that he can protect the people he cares about. Boma looking for the Dragon Balls is what started everything. Not only that, he's learned so much from being with her and she's always been supportive of his goals. And when his parents came back to life, she gave them capsules with house and food to start their new lives on Earth. Bardock accepts his challenge, but says he won't hold back and he isn't lying. In the blink of an eye, he punches Kakarot as hard as he can, sending his son out of sight and leaving only the torn down trees that Kakarot went crashing through. Bardock begins to walk off, telling Gine to go get her son, but before anyone can move, Kakarot comes running towards his father at astonishing speed, launching a punch with all his might, but it does nothing though Kakarot doesn't falter as he follows up with a flurry of blows, hoping one would land, but Bardock blocks all of them. His father then throws another punch, but Kakarot blocks and digs his feet into the ground so he doesn't get sent flying. Unfortunately, the attack broke one of Kakarot's arms, making it useless, but this doesn't stop the young Saiyan for even a second. He charges for it again, and Bardock tries throwing another punch, but Kakarot dodges with the 
after image appearing behind his father with a kick but bardock is still able to block this attack kakarot once again lets out a barrage of blows but even though his arm is broken he's getting faster and stronger bardock sees the look of determination in his son's eyes and can't help but to smile he then charges up his key pushing his son back before flying in the sky and diving back down for an aerial attack. Kakarot doesn't back down, concentrating all his energy into his fists before tackling his father head on. However, Bardock notices this attack is different from the last ones and instinctually begins to block. Though Kakarot doesn't stop and as if he somehow channeled the power of the great ape, in his base form, he breaks through his father's defense and uppercuts him out of the sky, sending him crashing into the ground. Everyone is surprised that his father lies there, and nobody knows where the burst of power came from, but Bardock doesn't care. He's proud of his son and gives him his blessing to do what he wants. Kakarot is ready to jump for joy, but he knows the next thing he has to do is propose to Boma, who is watching in suspense the whole time. Of course she accepts, starting the next step in their lives together. The two would move into capsule court together and Trunks would be born a year later. As for Raditz, he would be told by his mother and brother that he must do things besides training and begin building relationships of his own outside of family. And although he didn't agree, he didn't want to make anyone mad. So he would make frequent visits to Jingle Village, visiting Android 8, who he related to. Suno would, of course, always be happy to see Raditz, so although he came for Android 8, the three of them would hang out together quite frequently. However, this piece doesn't last long because at age 753, King Piccolo was released from the rice cooker, who, as we know, is not only looking for the Dragon Balls, but is also killing every martial artist. Now, I do think Kakarot would keep the four-star ball as a momentum for the start of his journey, even giving it to his son as a hat, so when Tambourine came to steal it, he gets killed by Kakarot, who feels the monster was threatening his son. Kakarot at this point has a power level of 1600, so what did you expect? Now, Piccolo can sense when and where his child dies, so he decides to kill this threat himself. But it doesn't take long for him to realize he's no match for Kakarot, so when given the chance to run, Humiliated at the thought, he tries taking Trunks hostage. When this happened, Kakarot sees Red, blitzes the Demon King, wiping it off the face of the earth before he can spit out an egg. However, when this happens, the Dragon Ball on Trunks' head turns to stone. Even the Dragon Radar couldn't pick up the signal, so he goes to ask Korin to see if he knows anything, which leads him to Kami's lookout, thinking the Guardian of Earth could help. Seeing as Korin's original plan in canon was to have Goku and Piccolo take each other out and wish Goku back, I don't think he knew Kami was linked with the Demon King. So when Kakarot arrives on the lookout, he's greeted by Mr. Popo, who relates to the young saying that Kami has been watching his family since they came to Earth in fear of their power, but eventually realizes that they were kind souls and is happy that they're the ones who defeated his evil side. Although this means the Dragon Balls are gone, he allows him to use the lookout to train, which should grow their power even more. Kakarot goes to tell his family this, and they all head to the lookout. Now, before they went to the lookout, Raditz and Bardock had a power level of 2400. After training for the next year and the last day going into the time chamber, with the first trip being Raditz and Bardock, and the next one being Kakarot and Bardock, Bardock using both of his trips for the sake of his sons growing stronger. Their new power levels would be 46,000 for Raditz and Bardock and 35,000 for Kakarot. Though entering the time chamber with its 10 times gravity, Kakarot had an idea of making a room with even more increased gravity to further his family's training. And thus the gravity chamber was created with the help of Dr. Briefs relatively quickly. So another year of training in 100 times gravity, the Saiyans would see another huge increase in power with Kakarot finally catching up to his father and brother, their power levels being 230,000. And with this much power, Bardock would finally feel confident in getting revenge on Frieza. So 
They get some sensu beans from Corrin and fly out into space to face Frieza's army. And this is where we'll leave off part one. I really had fun writing this story because I never get too many chances to tackle OG Dragon Ball. But I kind of feel bad that this story took so long. And the reason being is it had so many changes from my original bullet points. I'm not going into every single one, but I originally had Raditz feeling superior to the people of Earth, including his brother, because he was so strong. But ultimately, I like this version better. But tell me what you guys think in the comments, how y'all would have tackled this story, including if you would have made the Saiyan stronger or weaker by the end of this part. Can't wait to read what y'all say, and I hope y'all like and subscribe so I can make a part two. But until next time, have a good one.